it's really annoying to uh to have it oh okay uh, i've got a call from josh artson oh yeah awesome hello, hello. hey josh how are you hey how's it going man hey man um great how is it going with you i'm, I'm really yeah, good it's been a long time i thought I'd, I'd just go for it i'm a bit ill you might be able to tell but um i fancied it fancied a talk so all right we are already on the air as you might oh. hear from my radio voice radio, voice. <laughs> radio yes. voice it is so you are an aspiring radio um host i guess isn't uh, that one of your yeah, dreams kind of i mean that's one of my options at the moment um i've got quite a wide a wide idea of what I want to do at the moment, but yeah, that's one of them. I really like uh, doing radio at college, and uh, yeah, it's it's a bunch of fun, really. So, all right, yeah. so so Josh and I met on Xbox, believe it or not. <laughs> we yeah, we had a lot of great memories on that. Um, uh, Josh was the first one to actually take the step to not being um, how would you I say this politely. A raving Xbox addict like I, uh, I am trying point. not to be. <laughs> I was at one point. I mean, I, I was. It was a. It was a job, pretty much, at one point. But yeah, things have changed a lot in a couple of years, really, haven't they? Yeah, they have. They have. That only just recently for me, because I think it. I think we both. I you came to terms with. Can I call it the addiction? Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. I came it to was, essentially, really. Yeah, because essentially we depended uh, on the Xbox for fun, so yeah. that's that's where the pro where the problem most of the time is. Um, I mean, the problem yeah. also was that I was like giving up other stuff for my time on Xbox, and I you reach a point where you're like, that's just not good, really, like. You should be going out instead of playing Xbox all the time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to take those opportunities in life because otherwise you don't really go forward. You just sort of stay in the same spot. I mean, I had a great time on Xbox. I met a bunch of people. I met you guys, made some good friends. And, you know, it's been great. But um, I think Xbox only takes you so far, really. Yeah, it, it it's, it's not that you wouldn't meet any better people in real life because mm. um, Xbox actually just keeps you inside it's great that we met but f yeah. and you know if, if it was another um another dimension or <laughs> if you would have chosen a different path than uh, xbox as a free time just um yeah i don't know I mean, anything I, I don't regret anything really um i mean toward that it was the past six months of playing like properly xbox that i was i was drifting off and i you know it wasn't really fun anymore. It was like a force of habit almost. So, yeah, the the magic of the game is yeah, mm. well, essentially, is yeah, yeah. it's just gone. It's especially with COD. I mean, we played yeah. a lot of COD. That was all we played pretty much. That was all we played. Yeah, the, the, that's like it. If you would play something else, we would go on COD, like a minute of or, or ten minutes after it or something after yeah. we got on the different game. So, the COD was the. Good. To be fair, we did get good. We like, did get really good. We well, I swear we had some. You probably beaten it like a thousand times, but um, we had a we had a sick um winning streak. I remember that. Yeah, one hundred and ten was our um. Yeah, something crazy like that. Yeah, I I haven't beaten it. Um, and I'm not planning to. I said it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But now, nowadays, I'm I'm playing the single player. I'm all about the single player. This is when I actually play. I play, you know. Probably a solid hour every uh, every other day, really. Um, but I, I play single because that's what I enjoy. I like getting like immersed in the storyline, really. All right. Yeah, that's actually right. the way to play the game, mm. <laughs> essentially. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that um, I I need to. Hmm. No, sorry. I'm thinking out loud, and I shouldn't sure. do that on the podcast. <laughs> so. Yeah. What has been keeping keeping you bu busy then? Because I'm dying to know, man. <laughs> like, um, well, I guess when once you get rid of that, you sort of um, you just get other other hobbies, really. Um, I've got quite into fitness. I'm doing a lot of that, really. Um, I'm super into my rugby more than I have ever been in, really. So I watch 
pretty much games on TV whenever I can. I mean, that's not exactly sociable, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm way more sociable than I used to be. Um, seeing people more often. And I'm saying yes way more. I think it's the main difference. If there's an opportunity, I very rarely say no. Um, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't actually tell you what I do for the most part. I do a lot of reading. It's all about the enlightenment nowadays. I'm all about finding the inner peace, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a bit of a hippie. But uh, yeah, what about you? What What are you up to? Well, um, I'm... I am and always was an introvert. If you know what I... Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so... Yeah. Well, well, like for, sort of for shy, keep yourself to yourself, sort of person. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like that. But like, uh, for the people that don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll try and briefly um, tell you what it is. It's mm. you've got introverts, you've got ambi, ambiverts, ambiverts. I don't know, and you've got um, extrovert, uh, introverts, which mm -hmm. I categorize myself in. Um, the extroverts are basically, it's all about how you kind of like recharge your. Uh, inner battery, so to speak. Uh, if you have a, had a stressy day at work or at school or whatever, you kind of need to relax. But um, extroverts do it. How would you? Say? They 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 need to do it with impulses. Mm. Impulses like partying, um, having a lot. Mean, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, ha having a lot of like interactions uh, with random people or. A so lot it's of more friends. Of a, a lifestyle sort of thing. Yeah, it is. It is uh, essentially what what it is. Yeah, and in, introverts are people who get home and and read a book or listen to mm. music or uh, they most of the time uh, extroverts have a lot of a lot of friends, mm -hmm. but you know friends, wink wink yeah. friends. Yeah. But um, the the introverts tend to have more real friends. Less friends, but yeah. uh, real friends. Yeah, um, tend to be anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, yeah, coincidentally, they tend to be, those friends tend to be introvert most of the time as well. <laughs> so, yeah. that's kind of good, cool. I think I'm a bit of both, really. Yeah, I, that's... I my moments of, uh, that's, that's the uh, third one, actually, the amb mm. ambivert. It's both of them. And that's, in my opinion, you have... The ba you've you're the best uh, out of all three because <laughs> there the there are downsides of it uh, and uh, I see Marlon Roma uh, is in the chat as well let's not ignore our listeners hey Marlon uh, like then we see indeed and you he is an introvert as well which is oh, okay. really awesome really awesome so um how how do you recharge your battery man like which um, Which things do you do? Do you play sports or something? I do, but I think mainly it's to do with um, knowing what relaxes you. You know, once you come home from a tough day, you sort of you got to find that mental space to to keep sane and recharge, as you said. And uh, that comes from the small things. I find that means reading, um, even if it's going for a run. You know, I enjoy a run on my own. It's quite. Yeah, it's zen and you know it's just you and nature as such to be cliche oh yeah um, so it's those kind of things I think it's it's uh, often individual stuff that I do to keep myself sane really but yeah, yeah. what about you uh, what I do most of the time uh, and I have to thank you for it actually <laughs> Uh, yeah podcasts uh, wow. I, I like to listen to podcasts and I like to go out as well um, mm. with my good friends uh, but not too too uh, crowded play like too crowded too much too crowded and uh, how you would you say it too crowded places too many not too many is that not too crowded places a crowded oh, place yeah okay yeah so, yeah I know what you mean. yeah like, there's not a it it if it's like a rave or like an actual you know house party or something I wouldn't go there you wouldn't see me in a mile. R miles Sorry, radius <laughs> yeah but uh I, I used to do that and uh but I'd, i had a good time but then again i didn't if you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, it does but, get old quite quickly depending on depending on the people you're with i often find yes indeed mm -hmm. if you're just with a bunch of uh people that you know you, kn you know you're not going to become great friends with they're just almost acquaintances but your mates you know 
those tend to be the where things get a bit a bit of a slope downward really if, yeah. you, if you're going to parties with your friends and you're having a great time and you're meeting new people and it's exciting then I'm all up for that but other than that I agree yeah awesome and by the way Marlon to uh, to answer your question no I will not be attending the safari party uh, which is a an annual party at um, well the, where my school is that basic area it's called mm. deep and big hustle tank yeah mm -hmm. those are cities and yeah so it's a big po annual party uh, a lot of people look out for it i used to attend it every year for like three or four years um but every time something went wrong um mm. from from people being so drunk that they needed to be hospitalized oh my God. to to um man so some people just yeah. go overboard like yeah I don't know about you, but I have a limit where I know, even though in my drunken state, I'm like, you know what, this is too much. I'm going to stop now. But some people just don't have that, can't flick that switch to say, you know what, enough is enough. And they just go overboard and that's where you get your stomach pumped and yeah. hospital and yeah. Yeah, I not, right? that's where the party um, turns into some sort of uh, drama or yeah, disaster. I mean, yeah. I've um, had a few of those. When you, and the, the worst part is that it often it brings down your night because you have to take care of them assuming they're you know one of your friends or something like that so it's when you do one of those those completely wasted and out of your face um you sort of affect everyone around you really you're sort yeah. of not only destroying your own night because you're going to have a shit night after that you're sort of ruining all your friends as well so it's yeah. a selfish thing but at the same time i understand how it happens so yeah i know yeah, I, I try I try to be well under the influence a bit. But uh but when yeah. I when I when I notice I'm getting too drowsy. Yeah. Uh I kind of stop. And when when I'm too drowsy cuz that happens quite often since we mm. have discovered the Irish pub in Yang. <laughs> but um <laughs> well, um I try I try to keep it on the down low. So yeah. Are you uh, are you a drinker, George? Uh, I am a drinker. Um, not not huge amounts. I mean, I'll go to a party or a gathering with the intention of getting drunk, but not drunk to the point where it affects me the next day particularly. You know, yeah. just on that borderline where I can I can ease off, do some silly things, have some fun. Yeah, not too much. The 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 balance. That that's actually the point that you must not cross ever yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, the, people do do stupid stuff when they're when they're drunk and you i mean anyone does when they get too drunk i mean it's not really a personality thing no. if you get drunk enough you're gonna do some stupid stuff that's just like how it is it's fact but uh, if you get the right combination of um understanding one when you've reached your limit and seeing other people around you then I think you can get it just right when you're having a good time and yet not ruin anyone's fun. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's a it's a borderline as you said, but you can get it quite right after time. Yeah, true. We um we actually do go to like a pub every mm -hmm. every Saturday uh evening. That's a nice um, tradition. Yeah, 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 I know. Um but <laughs> There is a lot. Uh, I, I, I don't think it's really healthy to I'll do that every week. I really have to well, address. I, I guess I guess it depends on, on how much you're drinking, really. That's true, but... Um, and what you're drinking, I suppose. And what... <laughs> that, that's spot on. Uh, yeah. yeah, true. What do, you tend to, what do you tend to drink, then? Oh, man, that's a good question. I mo Mostly, I try to, um, to drink... Well, like beers that I haven't drank yet, but mm. that's difficult to find. I often <laughs> find I get the worst effect from the beers. The the like the day after, I feel just unhealthy after beer. Getting drunk on beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I if I'm just trying to get drunk, I will have some spirits, but not go over the top. Yeah, but, uh, that's not very manly of me, but. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no, but. It takes. Uh, see me. I I am a a person with. A fair amount of body mass. I can take a couple of beers. <laughs> ah, that's fair enough. That's fair yeah. Enough. What's your 
What's your favorite favorite alcoholic beverage? Oh, oh! Uh, <laughs> this is where the good thing starts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm I'm into this um sort of the this beer at the moment called uh, Desperado. You ever had mm. that? Mm, yes, I the like Mexican. Yeah, the Mexican one. Is it with I tequila? Is is that the one it's, with it's tequila? Got some tequila in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the uh, like the name of the alcohol is, but um. I'm into that at the moment. Ethanol. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't always, huh. I haven't always been into that. Other than that, uh, do you know what? I love a good port. Late night port. That, oh. is, that is the shit, mate. That is the shit. Yeah. What about you? What's your favorite? Uh, my favorite alcoholic beverage easily is Guinness. Um, oh, you're a yeah. Guinness man. I am a Guinness man. I wasn't. This is the story of me and Guinness, right? It's not long, so it right, doesn't it. really matter. So I drank Guinness at the Irish pub and <laughs> at the Irish pub. Irish no, <laughs> at the Irish pub. Damn it! <laughs> at the Irish pub in Hustle, which is a, another city. Doesn't matter. Um, but I I didn't really like it. I thought it was really bitter. And it tasted like beer and coffee. And um, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't for me. Yeah. But th then, uh, like a month later, we had, like, exams. I think it's GCSEs, like, the last exams of the year, basically. Yeah. Um, and I just really craved for a Guinness. Like, it, I for I craved for the, the drink that I didn't like. So... Then I, 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 I get that, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I have to take two buses to go to, you know, back and forth from my home to my school, right? And yeah. um, midway of my whole uh, drive home, or, yeah, drive home, mm -hmm. I um, I stop in Genk, which is the Irish pub that I mentioned earlier as well. Um, you've got a lot of Irish pubs here. Don't, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and... Um, so I, I stopped there when I was supposed to go home and study and uh, drank some Guinness and it was hey, amazing, amazing. Yep. Oh, I see uh, uh, Jardijk, uh, which is uh, Jarne. I don't know how I pr would pronounce it in a in a English um, accent without sounding well yeah. Dutch or from Holland. Oh, fair enough. I'm, it's an amazing talent to be able to speak as fluently as you do anyway. So. Ah, you thank you. Good. Thank you very much. For, thank you very much. No. So, yeah. Okay. So awesome. Oh, we heard uh, Yarna and and I. We go to the music academy together, together, and we oh. are in some sort of band. But it's it's like a supervised band, right? So all yeah. the like the practical bit bit of being a musician uh, comes into place there, and uh, we're, we're we we're really really awesome. Um, uh, band ens ensemble uh, ensemble assembly assembly bam <laughs> bam that was evolution right there uh, <laughs> so we we're a really awesome uh, fun assembly we actually yeah. played on a sort of festival as well uh, this well last year and uh, it was amazing an amazing experience and now oh, wow sounds great yeah now we heard that our um, our drummer one of we've got like three friends you've got Yarna uh, Alexi which is a drummer and me uh, and and uh, Alexi has to go he's being transferred to another assembly and I am just good at oh, I am God. really good at it's mm. it's insane life is a beach yeah I know I know <laughs> it is it is life is a beach life is a beach Left is the beach. That, that does sound. That sounds pretty damn cool. I'll be honest. Yeah, it it's really. Uh, I would. Hang on. Uh, Yorna says it's really. It, it really really sucks, dude. He's going to the assembly of a lot. Oh, of Alano. Damn you, Alano! Damn you, traitor! Traitor! No, actually, I I like Alano, but I don't like that Alexi's going. I. I, I can't imagine who, which drummer we're gonna have next. Like, Alexi was dead on. Like, every beat was on and, and it was just playing with professionals. 
Uh, Yorna plays the sax, by the way. He's amazing at it. I love hearing him play the sax. He he just you know that growling. I call it the sexy noise. The growling uh, uh, sound of the sax, like I don't know how how I would. Um... No, I know what you mean. I I do love that sound. Yeah. It's very relaxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, more, the older I've got, the more I've got into like that jazz sound, and it's it's quite chilled out music, really. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I get what you mean. Very nice. Very, very, very nice. Yes, very, very, very nice. Yeah. Oh. So I have a question for you. Um, All right. I mean, it's been a while since we last spoke. Have you? Do you have any idea what you want to be in like, say, in ten years' time? Oh, that's a great question. Um, uh, and I'm going to re- uh, like reflect it right back to you in a second. But um, I'm going to answer it first. I, I've i been thinking about it. And I kind of want to be a guitar teacher. But like... Oh, yeah. I can imagine that. Yeah. Like a, like a, a private guitar teacher, if that makes yeah. sense. Like no whole classes. Yeah. Not, not a conveyor belt work. Just personal... Yeah time with the student and uh, in a non-sexual way of course Uh, (laughs) so but no um, and uh, I don't really want to want to steal your idea because it was your idea and it's your ground but I (laughs) read I I really love the whole speaking the um, radio kind of thing a bit magical about it i don't know what it is yeah i know but i think i do have to to get a few lessons in uh did is it didactic didactic Uh, lessons maybe no no not dialect Uh, it's um it i don't know if i if if i'm I'm saying this correct is uh, this it's like it's just speaking basically it's uh we oh, okay. we we call it didactic in um in dutch but i okay. thought maybe it works if i got it <laughs> englishize it well, englishize well, that's one of those things that i think <laughs> comes from what you're doing right now it's just repeatedly uh getting experience from it and it just flows over time i mean my first radio show for college was just like, oh looking back i was like cringe 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 just because I was nervous, and as you said, like that skill hadn't really been um, been used yet. But as as you do more and more, it just sort of becomes natural, and the nerves go quite a lot less. And suddenly, you're not so scared to to form a sentence anymore. You know, it is and things things flow much more easy. And what I've noticed a lot from you, and I noticed it for myself because I I actually actually kind of pay attention to it mm. the ums the ums the ums the ums ah, yeah. you don't different. you like if you say an um it's a meant um it, you, like it's imp- bam when i i i do pay, pay attention to it um damn it <laughs> <laughs> oh well i had I hadn't noticed really i might take notice of that now yeah, but you you you're fine. I don't I don't think you've mentioned one um in this whole twenty three minutes and twenty two seconds. I try and do it like philosophically. I'm like hmm, like stroking my beard sort of thing, you know. Yeah, I can actually do it because I I do, I am growing a. Oh, me too. I've got a nice beard going on. You'd be pretty proud, I think. Oh my God, Joshy! Yeah. <laughs> I know, man. I'm happy. Stroking it right now. Oh yeah, do that's. Do you have a do you have that, a trimmer? A beard trimmer. Um, yeah, sort of. I've got like, I've got a razor, like an electric razor, mm. and it has like a trim fu- function on it. But it's yeah, not really yeah. great. It's not really great. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, does does it say like length on it? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, my, my, it doesn't sound like much when I tell people this, but mine is about um, four millimeters at the moment, which isn't a huge amount, but it's it's an obvious beard basically. And yeah. I'm having fun with it. I feel wiser by the minute, you know? Yeah. Feel, it's one of those things you can just do when you're thinking. Just have a little stroke. Have a little stroke. Yeah. And nice. and I, I love it when if if people would join right now, like in the podcast, and, yeah. and they just could hear you say, just have, have a little, little stroke. stroke. Yeah. <laughs> and but, even that is so 
you know, wrong in so many ways. <laughs> so Have a little stroke, Grandma. Little stroke. Or, <laughs> okay, let's we, stop. We've a... gone so far from the point. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Um... <laughs> oh, we're talking about arms, and I just did my first arm, I think. Uh... Haha! Yes! Haha! <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes. yeah, that that stuff just goes away with with time. I think. I mean, and with all the stuff I've done, back from. Do you remember the first video I did for Ghost? I mean, it was it was like a ten and one on COD Four, and if you compare the commentary I did then to how I do it now, it's cringeworthy. I mean, it's like it's it's quiet and it's very antisocial sort of commentary. But like, it just it just happens with time and practice, really, doesn't it? After yeah, these videos and these podcasts and just stuff like that, you you eventually it becomes can't help but get better. Yeah, it becomes natural as you stated earlier. Yeah, exactly. um, and also listening to other podcasts or radio shows does oh, yeah, help definitely. as well. Yeah. Have you ever heard uh, Joe Rogan's podcast? Yes, you you actually told me about it, and I yeah. checked it out. But um, it's a really good podcast, but it's not my kind of podcast. You know what That's I mean? Fair enough. Yeah. Like. I, I, I've watched a lot of Joe Rogan. Uh, Reagan? Rogan? Rogan. It's Rogan, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that podcast actually made me go to The Thinking Atheist, which is, I, I don't know, this might be a really good subject as well. Are you uh, religious? Damn it. Uh, I'm uh, not. I'm definitely not. I'm not. Um, I, I, atheist is a funny one because it, like, it sort of puts a label on something that is saying it doesn't have a label. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, athe- atheists, it's like saying I don't believe in a god, yet by not believing in a god, you believe in something. Does that make any sense? Like, yes, it's like off is a TV channel, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. So, like, I, uh, I do believe in um, not not spiritual stuff as such, but I believe in simple stuff like, sure, why, why shouldn't there be other dimensions and why shouldn't there be other realities and... You know, we can. When you actually think about these things, you fall asleep, right? You fall yeah, asleep yeah, night, yeah. And you see moving images, and you can fly, and these things. And there's no denying that is weird as hell. Like that is a magical thing. That's a really magical thing. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And that goes unnoticed. And I think it's it's silly to not notice those things. That there is quite clearly other stuff, um, other potential out there that we just can't find at the moment. And whether we ever will, I have no idea. But. So yeah, I, I believe in that sort of stuff. I think there's more out there than we know. Um, but no, I don't believe in a god. I think that's sort of, I mean, I don't want to push the limit, but I think that's sort of like something old folk tale to make people act well, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. That, spot on. Actually, to control a big crowd of people, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's essentially a dictatorship because it's controlled through fear. Oh, you know, it definitely is. It... It's, it's like if you're a bad person, you're going to hell. I think Joe Rogan said it, that at some point in your life, you've got to realize that the reason you're supporting this religion, you, the reason religion exists, is because it's generally good to be nice to people. So get rid of your religion, well, that sounds so horrible, but, and just look at yourself and think, you know what, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because it's good to treat people nicely. So that's what I'm going to do. You don't have to support a god. You don't have to bow down if you don't want to. That's, that's dictatorship. You don't need that. Just be yourself and be nice to people and be kind. Simples. Life sorted. And this is in a nutshell why I did... I I, I was looking forward so much to have Josh on my... (laughs) Well, essentially, what is my first podcast, I guess. Um, So thank you for this amazing, amazing um, answer, actually. Oh, thank you for having me. Very nice. No, but uh, it's uh, it's not over. But I just wanted to take a moment and yeah. address that that was so well put. Um, I watch a lot of uh, the, you know conversations. Uh, well, I'm sorry, I listen to a lot of conversations like this on the podcast of the Thinking Atheist and so on. But um, I I don't suppose you have watched those already. Uh, I watch those kind of things. I mean, that's often sort of covered in. Uh, the Joe Rogan sort of stuff, but no, I don't. I don't specifically sort of watch those kind of things normally or listen. Yeah, well, you put it really, really nicely. Thank al- you. Almost perfect, as if perfect actually exists. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, that would be very close to it. So yeah, um, I, um, I had a topic. I heard a topic. Um, mm-hmm. 
Well, I didn't hear a topic. I, <laughs> I, I felt, I sensed it coming. You, mm-hmm. When you said, when you fall asleep and you dream and blah, 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 you feel that that's real and stuff. And uh-huh. um, what I wanted to add to it is uh, how cool is it that in that dream dimension, you can take ideas and project them on reality, right? You can basically mm-hmm. you get an idea from a different dimension and you can put it in do and this you can put it in waking life yeah that yeah the, the power that we have not um not understood Man, yeah and uh, that yeah. that came to my point and I, I i i guess you wanted to bring it up as well and if you did i hereby excuse myself or say you know sorry i don't know uh, but lucid dreaming you oh. You have you were the first one to um, to bring it up a few mm-hmm. years back, I guess. Mm-hmm. It, it's it, uh, oh, yeah, that's, yeah. That is pretty much one of the weirdest um, weirdest things in humanity that's just been brushed over. Like it's 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 this incredible thing. For anyone that doesn't know, uh, lucid dreaming is basically the ability to realize you're dreaming uh, in a dream. And what does that mean? That makes it means that you, in the dream, become conscious. So essentially, you're physically asleep, but mentally awake. And what that makes is essentially a world uh, in your own sleep. Because you see, you see your dream like you're seeing now. So wherever you are, have a look around your room, and this is what a lucid dream would look like. Very detailed, very vivid, and essentially exactly like life, really. But uh, yeah, it's one of these things that is just mind-boggling and isn't in mainstream science at all. And there's a lot of re- sorry, I'm rambling, but there's a no, lot no, of go research. on. There is a huge amount of research to show like its productivity, like how it can help people, how it can just lead to great things. Really, as you said, use it for um, projecting uh, positive things into waking life. And yeah, it's 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 one of these things that's just brushed over and it's incredible it's really incredible it is so have you have you got well of course i know you you told me you've had some of these some of these lucid dream experiences yourself Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it in your own words or um okay do you, what what specifically do you want to know well i i want to know a few things like how it feels um what 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 was your first impression of the whole thing and can you what can you manipulate can you manipulate anything in the dream or okay yeah okay so um i guess i should start uh, the first time i actually had a lucid dream i it didn't last long they never do for beginners particularly that's that could be translated to a different topic but um <laughs> Uh, yeah, it probably lasted a good 15 seconds, really. Um, and I became lucid, and I freaked out a little bit, and I was like, what the hell is this? And blah de blah blah And then I woke up, and I was like, that wasn't normal. And um, so that was my first my first one. But what, what does it feel like? It feels like... Um, it feels very like uh, walking through a nature reserve... And realizing how beautiful it is, like it, that's such a weird way of putting it, but like uh, it is essentially like having another life because there's no difference. You can touch grass and it feels like grass. In fact, it feels more like grass if that makes any sense. Yeah, it's more um, intense the uh, the yeah. whole experience. Yeah. You can you can smell food like it's really there. You can eat food and it tastes better than it does in real life. Um, it is, it's just this world of um, exaggerated greatness, really. Um, it's, everything, it's very vivid. It's, I mean, if you put a picture of, um, say, my house uh, in a lucid dream next to a picture of my house in real life, there would be no difference. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't tell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's how, um, how real it is, really. I, yeah. I think it can be explained, like, translated to... You expect something to feel a certain way, or uh, like the grass exam example, yep. for instance. And you, in a lucid dream, if you touch the grass, it's it's just like that expectation. Mm. Is if is, does that make oh, sense? Completely. Yeah, it does. I mean, uh, expectation 
is arguably, I mean, it's been debated for years, um, one of the main foundation blocks to, to lucid dreaming. Because, I mean, it's, it's about subconscious thought. Like, it's about subconscious thought projected, really. Um, so if you, see, uh, if you see a pie and you're like, you know what, that pie looks good. That pie is 90% chance going to taste great because you thought it was going to taste great. Yeah. You see what I mean? So yeah. It is, it, is, um, it is controlled by expectation, but there's always those uh, anomalies that prove that wrong. Yeah. For, like... the, for the majority, yeah, I think, I think it is completely. Obviously, you're right because you've got this thing called the placebo effect, mm. uh, which is just everything you stated right now. You think something is going to be it, and because of it, that is exactly. actually what you think it would be. I mean, the, the further you, you delve into that sort of world of lucid dreaming, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to be able to do. It's also a, a difficult thing to... Um, to get get on with with your waking life because I think the have you seen or read Narnia Witch in the Wardrobe? Uh, no, sorry, I'm not not too bitch of a, too, not too bitch <laughs> not too big okay. of a reader. So, uh, but, but have you watched Avatar? I've watched Avatar, yes. Okay, so I think that's a decent way of explaining it is that when you're going into this world, which is essentially Pandora. Yes. Um, when you're going into this world every night when you awaken, suddenly the real world isn't all that. You see what I mean? When yeah. you can do whatever you want, when you can fly and it can be as real as possible, when you can, you know, shoot lightning bolts, and then you wake up and then you get changed and you go to college and then you come home, it's like, oh, you know, which one's better? And yeah. That's a dangerous route to, to follow because then you, um, you know, psychologically that plays on you. So you've got to realize that the, the nice things in life but it does create this contrast of like you're going into um, Narnia, which is a, a place in London, which is wardrobe. It's always the analogy I use. I don't know why. No, it's a um, good one. Uh, you go into Narnia, you step out the wardrobe, and you can't tell anyone about it because it's controversial. People don't like to hear that sort of stuff. So you, you can fly around the world in about two seconds in your dream, wake up, and adrenaline pumping you're really happy because you just did that in your dream and you can't tell anyone so that's a bit of a down downer on it really but it's it's well worth it completely oh that's... Have, you, have you ever thought about uh trying to get into it well yes but i wouldn't know how is it is it actually some something everyone could do with uh, training or something by the way can i, I can i stop you there right mm -hmm. right now um people in chat hi jr pope by the way um, how have you been? It's been a long time. Uh, yeah, I, everyone who's watching or listening right now, if, if you're watching, too bad for you because there's not really too not much. Like yeah, not not a lot going on, going on at all. But um, thanks for listening. And we're, the topic is lucid dreaming. Um, dreaming in a state of physical awareness. Yeah. Could you say or 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 conscious awareness? Co yeah, conscious awareness. Okay. So sorry. Um, what were we uh, saying? Uh, <laughs> I was saying that um, you asked if I think everyone could do it. I think that uh, most people would do it. Um, it would take longer for some people and it would, it would take a short time for some people. It depends on uh, their, your own psychological stability, enlightenment, I guess, in a sense. A lot of people are living in denial. Um, a lot of people don't like to follow their own path in, in the sense of enlightenment. And they, for instance, my sister, um, my sister is far from from that sort of scene. Like she, she hates thinking about uh, the possibility of an afterlife or or anything religious, that sort of thing, anything like that. She she refuses to talk about. So some of those people I don't think are capable unless they had a dramatic change in the the way they thought. But yeah, I mean it, it's it's a combination between training, forming a habit, and um, psychologically, it it takes. A, quite a large amount of effort but yeah. yeah once you once you're there i think anyone's capable really especially you you're an open open-minded guy so there's no yeah. reason why why it shouldn't happen i'll give it a try but um um well uh by the way uh marlon see you tomorrow man thanks for joining um <laughs> bye bye yeah so i wouldn't i, I really wouldn't know 
how I could do it. I I think I've tried. I think I've tried it in the dream. Well, uh, um, what do you what do you like? What is your idea of preparing for? Like, how do you think you're supposed to train? Just well, I think I think just thinking about it, not necessarily before you go to bed, but just thinking about when I'm dreaming. Um, let's see how much I can do myself, right? Let's see how we can try and influence the, the dream itself. And I think if you have the general or genuine um, mindset, you mm. one of those dreams you will have to remember, oh, this yeah. looks like a dream. Let's see what I can do here. That right? is um, essentially the foundation block of it. And that is pretty much dead on perfect. It is hugely about wanting to be able to do it. Um, you got you got to be um, you got to be genuine. You got to be wanting to have a lucid dream, like going to bed excited about having a lucid dream. I've often found that the more relaxed and at ease you are with the idea of lucid dreaming, which often comes with time, the more likely it's going to happen. So if you if you go to bed like thinking right, I'm going to think about lucid dreaming nonstop until I go to sleep that way it's probably going to pop up in my dream. What I've often found is that it's not the case. If you think, it'd be nice if I had a lucid dream tonight, then it's more likely to actually happen. That's yeah. from personal experience. But but yeah, you've got the foundation block perfect there. It is this general want and um, sort of reminder in the back of your head that you want to lucid dream. But however, we live in a modern world where there's lots of techniques and things like that. And uh, people, I can't remember his name, leading psychologist um, came up with a bunch of techniques called a mild technique and wild technique is it wild? I don't know but um, <laughs> uh, mild stands for mnemonic um, induced lucid dreaming and it is essentially waking yourself at certain, I think I've got this right I haven't done this in such a long time mm. waking up at different parts of the night um, sort of becoming conscious maybe sitting up on your bed and thinking uh, yeah, I want to have a lucid dream when I go back to sleep. And there's also, people often find that um, things they do in waking life translate into their dream world. If you're worried about uh, uh, because you saw a spider, then often you'll have a dream about a spider. That's just how it works, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, what people have found that if you do a thing called reality checks, which is um, essentially something that um, will show you whether you're dreaming or not, I have quite a few. One of them is to hold my nose and to uh, try and breathe through it. And if I'm in a dream, I'll be able to breathe. Obviously, in reality, I, I can't do that. <laughs> so um, that's essentially a way of, of showing that you're in a dream. So after that, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm dreaming. And boom, you're lucid. So if you do that all the time in your waking life, then it's definitely going to translate eventually at some point into your dreaming life. And you'll, you'll do it there. So it's about habit building. And um, yeah, it's it's a weird it's a weird difficult road, but it's worth it, I guess. I do really want to try it, but it's it's not something you can you can do day by day, right? You have to mm. build it up for for weeks, as you say, habit oh, building. Yeah. So I'm I'm definitely gonna try it, and um, if it's all right for you, I would love um, love having you in a lot of my other podcasts or are other podcasts yeah, yeah, and sure. uh, taking taking calls if this show gets a little bit more views or yeah. enthusiastic people but it's it's really nice yeah. I'm, I'm gonna put this on YouTube as well so oh, awesome. uh, if you don't mind yeah, yeah that's fine all right I, I just uh, one tip that I would would give to anyone aspiring to to become a proper lucid dreamer is to not underestimate the power of recalling your dreams like uh, I think that's the strongest thing to becoming a lucid dreamer is if you can recall your dreams when I say recall I mean I don't know what that translates so um, it's basically just remembering your dreams when you wake up in the morning now how do you do that you you wake up in the morning if you remember anything like even if it's just uh, an image you saw you write it down in a dream journal and eventually what you'll find is uh, the more you do this the more you remember dreams you had, you know, in the past at night, and then uh, you get to a point where you you're remembering like three dreams a night in in detail, and when you're at that stage, um, 
you're more aware in the dream. It's hard to explain. You're more aware when in the dream because you've told yourself to remember the dream. Yeah. And so and so being lucid comes quite easily after that point. I mean, I'm I'm not a, a expert in it. I mean, I I lucid dream probably two to three times a week. So I'm not. It's not like an everyday thing for me. But um, that is the main tip. Remembering your dreams, I would say, is a huge step to 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 doing it regularly. So yeah, it's it's my rant over. Ta-da. <laughs> that was not a rant. That was a fucking amazing. Uh... It's not a speech, uh, um, an amazing lecture, <laughs> almost. It's it always amazing, uh, factual, oh, really. I find it very interesting. I always have so. Um, it's, it's a nice topic for me. Nice, nice. Oh, that, that that's, wow, that's amazing, man. What well, what are your, because you you like you know talking and and talking and doing this radio kind of format, right? Mm -hmm. um, what are your biggest inspirations? Um, I want to go into writing, um, so in terms of that, I, I really like um, some really influential books in my life. Um, what is it called? Hang on, one second. I'm just gonna go across the room. It's a book you would actually really appreciate. I think it's um, it's quite an old one. It's an American classic. It's it's called The Lessons of Don Juan: Journey to Iceland. I can't really pronounce that. Iceland. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. It's it's a philosophical book basically and um that, that's really inspired me in the past couple of years because i read that a couple of years ago and uh I've, i i want to be a writer that's my thing at the moment I've, i've got like this plan in my head that uh sort of 25 i'm gonna move to paris and i'm gonna just become a writer really because I, i love um i love words i love the idea of creating an image in someone's head and man almost manipulating them uh, into a story that, so that yeah That's well put. You've got these. Um, oh, I forgot the word. I had it in my mu in my my mind, but uh, the these. I didn't really answer your question. Sorry. Um, like. Oh yeah. Uh, Go on. Inspired me. Um, probably my dad. Uh, my dad's a very nice person, and I've got a very supportive family. So that's allowed me to sort of have an open mind with everything, really. Nice. So, yeah, that's about that's about it, really. Yeah. And what the I, yeah, I before I before I forget again, the word what I the word that I sought after was uh, unassigned. So you have words are these unassigned pieces of a puzzle that you mm. you can customly build and you can make it your exactly. own. That's what I that's what I want to say. But go on. <laughs> my, well, yeah, my life goal really at the moment is um, I just want to write or do something that changes. Um, changes a field of like uh, you know a genre or just something like that Some, something that makes a difference someone that makes someone think a little bit more you know if yeah. someone puts down my book and they're like you know what I've, I've realized this and that about my life because of reading this then I'm like yeah I'm complete thank you sort of yeah, yeah and you'll get that at, at probably your one of your first uh, book signings and uh, yeah exactly you know that'd be the best feeling that'd be great for me What about you, man? What's what's the 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 general goal sort of thing? My general, well, I that's a good question again. Um, I don't. I have I have a few um, role models, if you will. <laughs> But it's 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 also about talking. Uh, Richard Dawkins, take Richard Dawkins um, and Christopher Hitchens. They are. People who um, address problems in the world that it's like see like Islam and stuff. You've got these mm -hmm. extremist Islam um, people and movements, and and you've got these uh, just not only Islam, but Islam is one of the biggest taboo taboos out there, right? Mm -hmm. And these are people who kind of fight against. Um, dishonesty, not that, yeah. not that, yeah, you know, you know what I mean, right? Like I know what you mean, yeah, yeah. When, when there's a lot of corrupt stuff, there. corrupt stuff, indeed. Like they they kind of go into a fight, into a verbal, um, argumented fight, which where there's no victims in 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 this fight, right? Mm. It's well documented, um, 
civilized just conversation debates yeah. and Debate, i yeah. i was so uh, astounded that 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 you just ha could have such an effect without hurting anyone mm. with just just talking just yeah. it's it's yeah. an you could move mountains just by saying yeah. the right words to the right people right you feel like bowing down because no one's shooting each other and it's like yes the way yes to do it. indeed this is the path i want to follow if yeah. if I, I i don't want violence i want justice um myself i'm not not a real vigilante but i i do <laughs> i do oh, love I peace and stuff yeah, yeah. Well, that's great man so yeah richard dawkins and christopher hitchens the late christopher hitchens I mean, unfortunately it, it depends on on the person i guess like everyone has a a different view on, on life my view i don't think it's ever going to change i mean it's it's one that i've only developed in the past year or so is that uh i just do what makes me happy you know i'll go with the flow nothing has to be too attached like you know i'll just life is supposed to be a bit of fun you know take it seriously but don't take it too seriously i mean exactly um just just do what you want to do you know, don't hurt anyone. Be nice to people generally. Have some fun. That's fine. You know. Um, yeah. It's all about personal enlightenment, I guess. Finding whatever you want to do in this world and making the most of it. So yeah. And it sounds like you got that as well. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm it's this is that's why we we get along so well, uh, both in conversation as in just being friends, I guess, in in mm. daily life. It's uh, it's amazing. I wish you would live closer in yeah, like, some way that you would still have that amazing <laughs> English, that British <laughs> Dutch that that you can only be born with. Uh, <laughs> it's a big yeah. talent. Yeah, yeah. But I've got like I don't want to. I've been quite clinical in this podcast, but I don't want to. I have no problems with like religion. Like if you want to be a Christian, if you want to be a Buddhist or whatever that's completely cool that's up to you you know you you've made that choice and I've got no problem with that at the end of the day who am I to say that isn't what's true you know yeah yeah right but that's just not what I believe in and I don't think it's particularly right either yeah. it segregates people I think it separates people and it it um it creates wars essentially yeah I know I mean, but yeah <laughs> so I've got no no issues with anyone no beef yeah, same. Um, the yeah, s same here. But um, you get you can't really like shut your eyes for the the violence and stuff that religion mm. causes and caused, and the, the, there's more people killed in the name of God than than exactly. anything else. So um, this is where I um, am quite skeptic skeptical i'm all about re like freedom of speech uh, freedom mm. of religion but don't push it right don't push it yeah. on anyone i uh, i live by quite a simple philosophy it's one that my dad taught me from quite a young age and i've only really adopted it now is that you can do anything you want in life anything you want i don't care what you do as long as you don't harm anyone else that is simple as that do whatever you want be nice to people that is just simple, simple. Like, Your dad. You, yeah, yeah my, my dad is a wise guy and that is just something that I've been raised with. Just like morally, just don't be mean to people. Simple. I have like, to, I have to agree on mistakes. you. I mean, it's evolution. We, we are mean to each other. Sometimes it happens. I'm mean probably more often than a lot of people, but you know, everyone does that. You just got to sort of um, manage to to pull yourself back and realize your wrongdoings in that sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, this this has been a, a pretty fruitful podcast so far. Fruitful. Um, I I and like again. I I'm I'm really looking forward to to doing this again and like in in yeah I had, in I had the future. Fun, yeah. uh, I think I think this is a good note. Let's end it on a good yeah. good note. Um. Uh, Josh, how? Uh, yeah, thanks uh, very much for having me. <laughs> oh, uh, thanks for letting me have you. <laughs> and we'll see you on the next podcast. Uh, really yes. quick, Josh, would you like, would you like to, 
to do, do this every so often every week or so and yeah, um, to, yeah. we'll have like a week to to find stories find subjects and stuff and we'll just combine them just before the podcast and just uh, assemble a little little show yep obviously we can go along with it as we do the podcast but awesome. yeah so that's gonna be awesome um the next podcast is gonna be live saturday i guess if it's still good for you yep saturday should work i mean i'll, I'll let you know um timings but yeah that should be fine all right so um yeah. i'll 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 guess this is goodbye then thank you for yeah, joining for me listening. a lot of sweet lucid dreams and get better <laughs> very soon josh um oh, thank you thank you for listening people listening <laughs> yeah and uh we'll see you in the next podcast yes. goodbye, goodbye.